one of the applications of difference or recursive equations is the Cobweb model. In this video, we will develop the framework of the Cobweb model. Let us start. We are considering that we are dealing with first order difference equations and we are trying to observe the price fluctuations of products with lags involved in between production and sale. When there are lags, when there are gaps between the production and the sale, then we have a situation where we can say that we have difference equation working in the background. For example, the agricultural projects in which uh, products in which planting and harvesting occur with substantial gap. We know that whenever we sow a seed, it uh, takes some time to grow into a tree or a plant and then it takes some time to give us the fruit. So there is a certain gap involved in this process between the plantation or sowing the seed and the harvest. So when the gap is involved, we can consider that it is a situation where there is, uh, you know, a lag or a lead and that's where the difference equation comes into play. So let's get specific to the Cobweb model. It is basically dependent upon the demand and supply forces. And if we consider the demand side, it is um, as it is usually in other uh, types of analyses that the quantity demanded in a certain time period and of this crop in this case, because we are talking about agricultural project where the agricultural goods are being produced and sold, then it will be dependent upon the current price or the price of the crop in the current time period represented with PT. Here it is QDT. So it is a very straightforward situation where the buyer is concerned with the current price of the agricultural projects. Because whenever a buyer goes to the market to buy some agricultural products, uh, he considers the current price and is not co concerned with the future or the current uh, past price of that good. This basic psychology is mathematized here. This is how we can write this simple function that current price affects the current demand. And in other words, we can summarize it like this that current point in time that is T is the point in time where the analysis is being done. Then we have the supply side. Supply side uh, is slightly different because what we see is that the price in the current time period basically makes the uh, farmer think about if he should uh, plant more trees of that certain crop or less. That will be uh, based upon the price. If the price in current time period is high, he will m plant more of the uh, seeds or plants to get more harvest because he is likely to make more profit due to higher prices. So this is why the supply will be higher. But the supply in the next time period, because you know, there are lags and leads involved in the process of agricultural harvestation. And if the price is considered for today, the fruits or the vegetables or the product of the agricultural uh, environment will be available in the next time period. And that depends upon the season that we are dealing with some fruits or vegetables they can take less time to grow and some can take more so it depends upon that season it means that it is uh, a time period which is considered as a season here till the crop gets ready so mathematizing this agricultural phenomenon we can say that the price in the current time period affects the quantity supplied of the in the next time period that is future supply is determined by the current price something which is al available information for the farmer this is the available information and the future supply will be determined by it so now uh, the next thing that we have as a concern is that in the subscript we have t plus one here and here we have T. These are the subscripts of QD and QS respectively. 
if we are to achieve equilibrium we have to equate the qd and qs but the subscripts they should also be the same which they are not in this case so what we do is we want to get rid of this plus one that can be done by introducing minus one here and this is something we will do here that in the supply equation we are subtracting minus one from the lag from the uh, subscript as you will see in the subscript we have introduced minus one on both sides due to which qst is now a function of price in the previous time period definitely these two um, values will be cancelled out and we will be left with this so we have basically shift back the uh, supply function in terms of uh, its time period and now the uh, current supply is being determined by the price in the previous time period so the gist is the same that there is a lag involved in the process it was there before here there was a lead there was a gap again in this new form of the supply function there is still a lead or a, a lag in this case so uh, the process of difference equation is applicable here because the lag is there now we differentiate the demand and the supply functions here the demand function is unlagged because there wasn't any lag in it whereas the supply function has a certain lag these are their functional forms this is the functional form of qu quantity supplied this is the equation of the quantity demanded as written unlagged demand equation and this is lagged supply equation the equation form is this whereas this was the functional form so it is as per the usual form and this is the uh, lagged version of it in this equation now they are comparable because both of them have the same time period that is QDT and QT, QST. Since they are being equated here, their values will be substituted. Here we are, the substitution is taking place. And after the substitution, we have this form. We have rearranged them in a way where the value of PT is in the beginning and then PT minus 1 and then with the constants so there is a certain order however the problem is that in the standard form we don't have any coefficient other than one so we have to get rid of this beta for that we divide it throughout the equation by beta when we divide it by beta this uh, beta disappears and becomes one whereas th this delta has this beta now in the denominator as well as this um, alpha plus gamma has a d beta in the denominator so this is the recalling um, the time where we recall the standard form of the first order difference equation this is the standard form in which we have a plus and a c here and in in this process we compare it with our form that we have developed so when i write it here it there's uh, remains a discrepancy and that is instead of t plus 1 we have t instead of t we have t minus 1 so for this reason we have to uh, make it adjacent to the standard form and for standard form this t should not be t this should be t plus 1 and this t should become t minus 1 t, t minus 1 should become t so introducing this plus 1 on both sides is going to give me that desired situation as you can see I have introduced plus one in the subs uh, subscript of the uh, two variables that is pt and pt minus one so the simplification gives us this form here both of them they are cancelled out this is the uh, price in the next time period this is the price in the current time period and this can be considered as yt plus 1 from the standard form this can be considered as coefficient that is a and this can be considered as yt this can be considered as the value of c since we have all these values we can note them here and you can see we have written them here and now we can focus on the value of a 
because on the va basis of the value of a we can decide that which one of the formulas is to be used since a is equal to delta over beta we have to consider the value of delta primarily it is positive as it is well established that alpha beta gamma delta they are all positive values so be beta is also positive so when two positive values get divided they give a positive number may it be a decimal value or a very small fraction but it will still be a positive value so when this will be a positive value that is delta over beta then it cannot be equal to minus 1 because this is a negative value so in this case definitely a is not equal to minus 1 so we come to the next thing that is the application of the formula because we have already seen that the value of a is not equal to minus 1 so this is the formula which gets applicable in case of uh, when a is not equal to minus 1 and we have written the formula once explaining that b is equal to the negative value of a and then minus a is written instead so that we get clear now we substitute the values this is the value of c as you can see this is the value again of c this is the value of a and here afterwards we will put the value of a again so after putting all of these values we can now get this expression out of which betas will be cancelled out and once they get get cancelled out we'll be left with this expression where this term is actually equal to the particular integral or the equilibrium value and this is uh, this should be known as the uh, stationary equilibrium or static equilibrium because we don't have any variable in it so we have alpha beta delta gamma which are all constants or parameters there is no involvement of t variable in it so now we can write it pp that is particular integral for price or we can write it as p asterisk as the value of equilibrium now putting these values we write it in terms of p asterisk and now we can highlight what we have and it is actually the combination of particular integral and the complementary function for the price here this part is the arbitrary constant its value and this is the part which is b as you can see which is equal to minus small a and time variable is there as it should be now we should shed some light on uh, various parts of uh, complementary function because you know dynamic stability gets determined by pc or the complementary function generally speaking primarily we talk about role of a which is not the decisive thing but still it has effect as we have understood in the theory of the first order difference equation this uh, in certain situation has a certain value of a which is equal to the difference of the initial price and the equilibrium level of price the first effect that we observe through capital A is the scale effect and the other is the mirror effect so if the value of A is 0 this is one possibility and if the value of A is less than 1 here it was equal to 0 and if the value of A is equal to 1 and if the value of A is greater than 1 we have read this before in the theory of the first order difference equations that if it is equal to 0 it nullifies the whole expression that is PC becomes 0 so this is not an interesting case because it is going to uh, dis make the uh, the price complementary function disappear so we have another case where um, A is less than 1 it means that it's going to minify the uh, complementary function here it has made it half so this is an interesting case that we can study neutral case is when the a is equal to 1 so it doesn't change the particular uh, uh, the price company uh, the price complementary function so we don't study this as well in this case 
the amplification case occurs when the value phase greater than one for example if it is equal to two it is going to make the value twice of yc or pc in this case specifically speaking so this is another worth uh, studying case now the other uh, effect can be mirror effect and if uh, the sign is positive the neutral effect will take place it will retain the shape of the time path and the complementary function of price will remain the same but if the sign is negative it is going to reverse the whole situation and there will be um, a negative uh, change it means that there will be reversal or there will be a mirror image as a result of this so here you can see the complementary function has turned negative from positive so this is an interesting case that we can study after studying the effect of uh, capital A on the complementary function we will delve deeper into the diagram of it in the next part of this video so this was about the particular uh, and complementary functions and role of A this is where the time path was developed and this is how it was developed simply by using the formula of the time path where a is not equal to minus one this is where we were able to understand that a is not equal to minus one in this case so we use that formula and this is the development of the uh, first order difference equation form for which we equated qd and qs at the same point in time and uh, one of them was a lagged function that is the supply function was lagged function demand function however was not lagged or unlagged and to develop it we shifted the subscripts and we also understood the uh, peculiar feature of the supply side where the lag dependence happens that the current price affects the future supply whereas the demand side is something which is usual because current price determines the current quantity demanded and this is how the Cobb model is developed for example in cases where agricultural production is under study thank you